So basically, let me quickly summarize what we have uh, learned so far, right? So if we want to apply spectral gra graph partitioning to find two clusters uh, in a given graph, there are three steps we have to go through. In the first step, we have to do what is called pre-processing, where we construct a matrix representation of a graph. In the second step, we go and compute the eigenvalue decomposition of this, of this graph by identifying eigenvalues and eigenvectors. In particular, we are interested in the uh, second smallest eigenvalue, lambda 2, and the corresponding eigenvector uh, x. And then once we have the, cor the, the, the vector x, all we have to do is we have to go and do the grouping where we basically look at the components of x and determine which nodes belong to the set A and which nodes belong to the set B, right? Kind of who belongs to the left partition, who belongs to the right partition. So let me now give you an example. Right? So in the pre-processing step, I take our graph G and compute the Laplacian matrix L. In the second step, then we do the eigenvalue decomposition, where basically we take our L when we find a set of eigenvalues and a set of eigenvectors to this matrix L. We take the um, second uh, smallest eigenvalue and the corresponding uh, eigenvector, here it is, right? We take this, uh, this one out. So here are now all the nodes, one to, one to six, and these are the corresponding uh, uh, entries of the eigenvector. And what we find, for example, is that now what we have to do is we have to group these nodes, right? We would like to group these nodes into two clusters uh, corresponding to the embedding or the labels of the nodes that, that we have in the corresponding eigenvector. So how do we do this grouping? Um, doing the grouping is very simple. We basically go and sort the components of, uh, of, this, of vector x and identify clusters by splitting the vector in two. So <coughs> a naive approach to this, uh, to this case would be to ask, what are the corresponding values that are negative? What are the corresponding values that are positive, right? So if this is our vector x, we would split it here between nodes three and four. These are all the the nodes that are on the right hand side of the zero, these are all the nodes on the left hand side of the zero. Notice that some of the node labels equals to zero, exactly as we said, we said it should be. Also notice the sum of the squares of the values equals to one, which is again exactly as it should be. So what this basically means is now by splitting this vector in, in half into kind of the positive part and the negative part, we identified the two clusters. Here is the cluster A, which is composed of nodes one to three, and a cluster B that is composed of nodes uh, four, five, and six. So I have an A and I have a B, right? So basically what the components of second uh, smallest eigenvector did, it basically embedded the nodes on a line, assigned them the positive and negative values. We take all the positive nodes, put them into cluster A, take all the negative nodes, nodes with negative values, put them in the cluster B. So now, if I give you a bit uh, more interesting example, here I have graph on the left G that you see it has two clusters. Um, I computed the graph Laplacian. I computed the lambda two and the corresponding eigenvector X. Um, and all I did here is now I sorted the vector X two, right? The corresponding eigenvector to the second smallest eigenvalue by, by um, by the entries. And what you see very nicely is there is a set of components that has a negative value and a set of components that has a positive value. So basically uh, the eigenvalues or the entries of the eigenvector with a positive value correspond to one cluster um, and the remaining ones correspond to the second cluster. Of course, you can now start asking what is there anything interesting about the eigenvectors that correspond to let's say the third smallest eigenvalue, the fourth smallest eigenvalue and so on. And just to, for example, show you what happens that, um, the first case I'll show you is a graph that I have here that actually contains four small clusters. If the graph contains four small clusters and I still compute um, lambda two and the corresponding eigenvector x two, what, what I show you here is now the, the components of this eigenvector. And you see how, how the entries now first are split into two clusters, right? Kind of above zero and below zero. But then you actually find that here, we have these different steps, right? So basically we have the first the two clusters and then each of the two clusters has two small clusters embedded in them. And we see this kind of from the structure of the components of the second eigenvector very nicely. So the question is, if I have multiple um, clusters, how would I go identify them? So let me just show you um, some examples how to do this. 
for example, if this is my graph G, the same as I had before, I have my Laplacian matrix L that I do eigen decomposition. For example, here are the components of vector x1, and they all have exactly the same value, so exactly as, as, as we said and as we have proven. But for example, the components of the third um, smallest eigenvector um, are the following. And now what you see here is, for example, that this is the, the bottom cluster, this is the, the second cluster, then this would be the third cluster, and here these components correspond to the uh, fourth cluster. So basically, what does this mean? This gives us now an idea of how do we go if we want to partition a graph not in two clusters, but in k of them. There are two possible approaches. One approach is to do recursive bipartitioning. It's basically take the full graph, split it in two, and now for each of the two pieces, again, kind of try to split it in two. And we up, uh, keep applying this recursively in, until we are getting kind of smaller and smaller pieces. And another idea is to basically cluster using multiple eigenvalues um, and multiple eigenvectors. So basically, the idea is that for every node in the graph, we take our Laplacian matrix, compute the eigenvalue decomposition, and now we take the second eigenvector, the third eigenvector, fourth eigenvector, which basically means that every node of the graph is now um, uh, described by a small vector of values. And now we can apply k-means or something like that to, um, to identify the clusters. So basically the idea would be that we take the graph, compute the Laplacian matrix. From Laplacian matrix, what we will do is for every node i, we will come up with its corresponding, in some sense, coordinates, right? So we will take the uh, co coordinate uh, i of second smallest eigenvector, coordinate i of the third smallest eigenvector, and so on and so forth. And now that every node is described by a set of coordinates, we can run k-means that we have already discussed how to use uh, to identify uh, k clusters. And it turns out that in practice, this method uh, works really well. So with this, we have finished the discussion of spectral clustering and basically given a graph how to find individual clusters of nodes uh, in it.